Hi, my name is Dr. Phil Cooper. I'm from State of Mind, one of the co-founders. Welcome to the AJ Bell Stadium this afternoon. We've been doing a press briefing today around the State of Mind round that's coming up from June the 14th to 17th uh, in Super League. And also we're getting ready to try and break the world's record for the world's largest mental health awareness session at the Halliwell Jones on Wednesday night, June the 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, yes, State of Mind Charity, what we try and do is we uh, try to improve the mental fitness of rugby league players, uh, their fans and communities around uh, rugby league clubs. What we try and do is uh, improve mental fitness by delivering education sessions in schools, colleges, universities and employers, and obviously a range of community rugby clubs and f other fo football or sports clubs. Uh, we try and uh, change the way that people view mental fitness so it'll stop them uh, experiencing the, the ups and downs of life. The reason I got involved with State of Mind was uh, I work in mental health as a nurse consultant, uh, but what tends to happen is men don't tend to come to mental health uh, centres out of choice, but what they will do is they'll go to rugby league games. I'm a massive rugby league fan, big sports fan, and what we want to do is uh, just try and get, improve the mental fitness of the population, and rugby league and the RFL have given us a massive opportunity by having a full round of fixtures themed around mental fitness. No other sport in the UK does that at this point in time. This Wednesday, June the 6th, 5 to 7 p.m. at the Halliwell Jones, we are going to attempt to break the world's largest mental health awareness session. Uh, rugby league players will be involved in that, uh, players who've had their own experiences. The current records held in Chennai, India, of 688 people, so we are hoping to smash that on Wednesday evening. Well, I do a lot on the offload programme, so uh, a big part of my role is uh, presenting on the 10-week uh, the offload. So I do a lot for Salford, uh, Widnes and Warrington Wolves. Um, and I go in and we deliver programmes, uh, like an hour session uh, once a week, uh, from everything from emotional intelligence, problem solving, anger management. Uh, we do things like mindfulness um, and we deliver this to the, to the public. It's kind of, we have a drop-in session. Uh, but we also go into places like the Environment Agency, United Utilities. We're doing a lot of corporate stuff as well now. So it's, uh, it's all around raising awareness of mental health and spreading the word of state of mind. I left the RFL in January of 2016 after pretty much a 20-year relationship refereeing, both full-time and part-time. Uh, and all of a sudden, I just felt lost, really. I had, I had no focus because I had a few jobs uh, which were not rugby-related and, and it just didn't give me that high that I needed. And then you become a bit lonely, felt a bit vulnerable, uh, and you think, yeah, all my best years are behind me. So then I got some help from uh, Sporting Chance, uh, and, and off the back of that, uh, I just give a little presentation to the State of Mind guys, and they then asked me to get involved with them going round to schools, colleges, rugby clubs, uh, construction sites and all the alpha male organizations that we get involved in now and it's just been fantastic you know it's given me a purpose to get up in the morning because it's about raising uh, mental health within predominantly men um, you know it's about uh, it's an awareness charity you know we're trying to promote mental fitness uh, and I absolutely love what I'm doing now my name's Chris Hall um, you know I'm an ex-professional rugby league player I played for uh, three teams over a 10-year period and uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to sign at Castleford when I was 14. I had four years there, I think, before moving over to Wakefield, um, where I spent three years. And uh, through injury and misfortune of, of the weather, etc., I was forced to leave and went over to Dewsbury. Uh, I spent a season there before coming back to Cass and then finishing my days in the National League 3 equivalent. Back in March 2012, in what was a uh, supposedly a pre-season friendly, um, I was involved in two altercations which forced me to leave the field in protest. Uh, half an hour having left the field, I began seizuring and fitting and collapsed to the floor. Now I was rushed to hospital with what was a suspected broken jaw from all the blood rushing from my mouth. Moments later they'd realised I had uh, actually got a, a severe head injury. Now they rushed me over to Leeds um, and induced me into a coma, taking great risk and um, having spent uh, several days in intensive care and, uh, and being awoken sort of thing, I, I was told I actually passed twice on the operating table and uh, that I only had 20% of survival. Having woke up in intensive care, uh, I suffered paralysis and loss of speech, uh, and I only had partial use in one arm and, and one leg. Uh, it was like my worst nightmare, and I woke up as what I can only describe as an adult baby. And you've got to bear in mind, the hardest thing really is that the brain knows what it wants to do, you know, but I've still, I still can't physically brush my own teeth, you know, I still can't physically wash myself. Another thing that I suffered with was my me, me sort of temporal, temperamental and behavioural problems. So 
what I found was, uh, you know, you've got to bear in mind this was a long time after uh, that I could finally sort of, there was some form of communication then I worked on my speech, obviously. Uh, and I found myself constantly battling with my dad. He failed to understand, you know, he'd not suffered illness in his family. One minute I could be as placid as anything, and then I could be raged and green as the Incredible Hulk, you know, and that deeply upset my mum. And uh, I sort of, I found it hard that my mum went through so, through so much upset, not particularly caused by myself, but I blame myself for putting myself on that field and putting myself in that position. So, yeah, so I, I was fortunate um, back then to, um, have a, a good support network of friends, so regular contact, be it text message, um, uh, be it visits, and um, I found through uh, opening up and speaking out about my problems and, problems and struggles, that sort of, that gave me the, the, the sort of the, the inner strength and determination to help motivate myself to keep moving forward. So uh, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to set, set a goal here. It's a bit of a dream, but I reckon I can do this. So I took pictures of a particular car different colours and angles and I put them on a notice board and that notice board went smack back on a chest, back of the bedroom on a chest of drawers in full view. So when I was laid in bed, that's all I could see. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to get this car in two years and I actually got it in two years and three months, uh, believe it or not, which unfortunately I've not got the car now, but you know, I'd say that's probably, you know, one of the massive reasons why I'm here today, you know, I spoke out, I give myself that inner strength and, and focus, and then setting my own goals, which to some that extent wasn't achievable, but you know, I did it and I did it for myself. Uh, and that's what that ma that's all that matters. I've not got the car now, but I did it. And, and that's the key thing in this. So I was fortunate enough to bump into Carof Carvel in a supermarket meeting through himself, um, and rugby league then he contacted i think emma rose warren at the rfl and uh, i ended up joining state of mind as a presenter and that was the first real point in my life where i sort of my identity and purpose back and my view on things if, is if i can inspire one person that can potentially then inspire one other person for me it's job done you know we can't stress you know let it out you know how is anyone to know there's any problems if we just suffer in silence you know I opened up, I let it out and, and I'm here stood in front of this camera telling you my story today.